that um, can hear us. Uh, so Chesterton um, keeps sustainability in his history and protection of the world's resource and landscapes is integral part of Chesterton's business philosophy and in our operations. As I mentioned, we already had three uh, two uh, webinar sessions, refurbish and repair, aging plants and equipments, saving resources through advanced sealing and energy reduction, what actually you can see um, in internet, on our YouTube and LinkedIn channels. And today we have reducing environmental impact. So before we start, uh, so you can type your questions in the chat box. And I want to invite uh, one of our experts today, Enrico Zini, to lead this presentation. Hello, Enrico. Hello, Vitaly. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending today. So as a brief introduction um, on today's topic, why reducing environmental impacts? You have a generic picture of a pump leaking from a ceiling system, not a chest one, by the way. Uh, why is that so important to reduce environmental impact? Um, because we offer the uh, benefits to our customers of uh, less product wasted to leakages and reduced safety issues. You can imagine yeah, that uh, a pump like the one in the picture, if the fluid that is leaking um, generates uh, uh, surfaces with uh, safety issues or uh, maybe it's a harmful or a flammable product. So at the end of the day, reducing environmental impact means save money for the plant because you prevent costly problems. And um, in Chester, we can help to do that thanks to our uh, five product lines. That's why we are uh, participating uh, in five experts today. We will see today after this brief introduction how every single division of Chesterton can help in reducing environmental impacts. Because to conclude the introduction, so to say, uh, just as a refresh, as a reminder, Chesterton designs, produces, and sells five product lines. And we have uh, experts dedicated to each one. We have protective coatings, but also industrial lubricants and MRO products hydraulic seals, mechanical packing and gaskets, and finally, mechanical seals. So what's the added value for the end user uh, to have a single company offering five products lines? It means that if we take a general asset like a centrifugal pump, but of course that applies also to uh, cylinders, mixers, bulbs, heat exchangers, tanks, um, we can have a, com a complete control of all the upgrades that we can offer around the pump. We're not offering just same as before spare parts. We are offering improved sealing system, improved coatings on the wet part or also on the external part or on the concrete to protect from abrasion, erosion, corrosion. We can offer improved bearing protection, improved lubrication of the bearings, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, today's webinar, just like uh, in the previous two ones dedicated to the keep the planet clean concept, we will see how each different line of the same Chesson company can offer you these benefits. So I'm very glad to introduce the first one with Mr. Hans Decker. Hello, Hans. Okay. Hello. Um... So, yes, let me start. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, let's go to the first slide. Yes, so uh, my name is Hans Decker. I'm a product line manager for uh, packings and gaskets for Chesterton in uh, EMEA. Uh, 25 years uh, experience in the industry. And I'm going to talk about... Um, I, have, I could talk about many products uh, in relation to basically keeping uh, liquids and pollute, 
uh, pollutants out of the environment. But I'm going to focus on uh, one particular thing uh, today, which are fugitive emissions. Uh, and fugitive emissions um, are basically gases or vapors uh, or liquids uh, from equipment that basically leak to the environment uh, in an unintended way. So they're not supposed to, uh, to, to, to get into the environment, but they, they actually do. Um, they are basically invisible and the only way they can be detected is by using specific special imaging equipment, as you see on the, on the, on the right side, uh, or by using specific equipment, uh, leakage detectors that can um, detect these, um, these invisible leakages. So basically, fugitive emissions account for half of everything uh, that is leaking out of, out, out of a plant. So these, these invisible leakages, they, they are half of what comes out of a plant. And the interesting thing is that um, 50 to 60% of these fugitive emissions come basically from valves. Uh, and in particular, the, uh, the stuffing box of the valve. Um, and that is basically data that, uh, that comes from the uh, European IPPC. Uh, and as well, the uh, EPA, uh, Environmental Protection Agency in the, uh, in the US. So there's consensus about that subject. Um, and because of this fact, I'm going to talk today about mainly about valves. So uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, frequently operated valves, they are more likely to leak. And uh, valves with rising stem, they are a little bit more likely to leak than quarter turn valves. Um, but the fact is that basically a major part of the fugitive emissions is caused by minor part of equipment. So let me go to the next slide because I want to focus in particular about one solution from Chesterton that we use for valves, which is our 1622. Uh, and this 1622 is uh, guaranteed to leak um, under 100 ppm for at least five years. And in the next slide, I'm going to if you a little bit more details about that. Uh, but this is a, a packing specific, specifically for block valves uh, that will seal to an extremely low emission. So this is particularly uh, a packing for, for the oil and gas industry. It is fire safe. Um, we supply it as a spool packing and it complies with all the regulation uh, when installed as a spool packing. Uh, but we can supply this packing as well as, as pre-cut and pre-formed rings. Um, so we have a lot of approvals and standards for this. So we have, first of all, uh, for the German area, TA Luft approval. Uh, we are approved for Total, Texaco and Chevron. And we have as well um, a lot of the necessary API approvals and ISO approvals for this packing. So we have done... Um, for various valve customers, we have done ISO 15848 testing uh, up to a uh, higher temperature and down to the lowest leak level that is, 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 uh, we're able to reach in, in ISO. And as well, we have API 6, 622 approval for this packing. And as well, we've done various API 624 uh, valve approvals for this packing uh, for different valves. So, um, this is really meant for the oil and gas industry, as I said. So let me go to the next slide. Yes, almost. Because I want to talk a little bit more about that emission warranty that we uh, have. So we, we guarantee basically that the packing will not leak in excess of 100 ppm for a period of five years. And that 100 ppm, that is really basically uh, stands for parts per million. Um, but so that's a little bit hard to uh, visualize. But uh, 100 ppms is about one grams of methane leakage over a five year uh, period. So we guarantee that um, there's no not more than one gram of, of leakage over a five year period. And to see further how much this is, um, this is about one pint of CH4 gas at, at atmospheric pressure. So that's really very, very little. So we guarantee basically 
uh, that the leakage is practically zero over a five-year period. And to illustrate that a little bit further, I'm going to show you a case history. In Yep. So this is an application for uh, block valves uh, at, a, at a refinery in Slovakia. Um, we were dealing with block valves, obviously, uh, sealing hydrogen uh, up to 450 degrees, up to 100 bars, so very, very high temperature applications. Um, the previous seal that they used was a competitor combination set. Um, the problem with those valves was that the leakage was very, very high and um, the customer basically had issues uh, being conf conformed to local regu regulations. So what we did is we applied style 1622 packings in all of those 100 valves and we were able to reach very low emissions below 100 ppm. Um, and the first installation was done in 2012 and basically um, every, at every shutdown, the packing is being replaced. And that was basically everything I wanted to tell you about packing. So I give the control to uh, Nick, who can talk a little bit about uh, coatings. Okay, thank you, Hans. Very interesting. So, um... Yeah, welcome everybody to the webinar from me. For those maybe who don't know me, my name is Nick Wilson. I've been with Chesterton, uh, well, over 30 years, so um, time flies when you're having fun, as they say. My responsibility in Chesterton is to look after the ARC. Um, industrial coatings product range from a technical uh, point of view. So any technical questions, anyone, may have please contact me uh, so Han spoke about emissions into the air um, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different um, the big one yes I've not gone completely mad yet but that is a picture an animation of an iceberg so what am I talking about um, so as you all know an iceberg is a is an object that from the surface, we tend to only be able to see a small fraction of the overall iceberg. So I'm asking the question that we should ask our customers about icebergs in their facility. Not literal icebergs, um, but actually what I'm talking about is concrete. So I'm talking about concrete. It, it's a substance that's used universally um, throughout industries, throughout the world. And again, like an iceberg, we can only see the surface of the concrete. We don't really know what's going on underneath the surface of concrete. Um, and in facilities that are handling hazardous or dangerous substances, um, plants and industries need to be able to show that they can maintain and contain any of those substances that could cause damage to the environment. Um, so when we see the surface of the concrete, we may see a small bit of damage, we may see some cracking, we may see some holes in the concrete. But we, you know, what are the costs of that small appearance of surface damaged concrete? You know, we've got a lot of different costs that a plant has to think about. So safety related costs would be one. I'm not gonna go into these in detail because of the time, but production losses, damage finished goods, process interruptions, structural damage to equipment, for example, um, the depreciation of buildings, repair and maintenance costs. But the big one that I want to talk about today in relation to the environment is the costs of environmental control and compliance that plants face um, in ensuring that they maintain the integrity of containment areas the costs of cleanup in the event of a spill that gets through a containment area and the potential for fines that exist um, to industry. These are big, big costs that, you know, sometimes industries look at concrete areas and concrete substrates 
and they don't prioritize the budget to upgrade or to protect that containment until it's too late, until there's been an environmental um, spill that's allowed a chemical to get into the groundwater or into a river, causing some environmental problems. So it's important, you know, from a number of point of views. Um, but first of all, just in the European Union, for those online today that have customers in the European Union, this is covered under a directive, the Industrial Emissions Directive, um, that replaced the IPPC licensing um, uh, regulations that plants were required to follow. So plants have to be able to show that they're able to operate um, and contain and maintain uh, the integrity of their plants. And to do that, they require a permit. So getting a permit requires them to be able to show to an environmental inspection agency that any chemicals that are stored in the plant, if there is a spill of those chemicals, that they won't be able to enter into the environment and cause environmental damage. Um, and there are penalties that are laid down if plants operate and they are unable to maintain and contain these chemicals. So breach of the permits that plants are operating can result in the plant being shut down or suspended until they're able to show compliance with, the, um, with their permits and their regulations. And that requires an operator of a plant to take any necessary actions to maintain and to make sure that the control and the containment or the reduction of relevant hazardous substances are not going to cause a risk to the environment or to the health and safety of people in that area. So how do they do that and what is recommended? Basically, the European Union recommends the approach should be based on the best available techniques that are out there. So what does that actually mean? So in the definition and the regulations, the technique is both the technology, but also the way an installation is designed, built, maintained, and operated until it's decommissioned. The available techniques are anything that is developed that is has to be in economically and technically viable. Um, they have to take into consideration the costs of applying that technique, of course, and the advantages of doing that. And of course, that technique must be reasonably accessible to the operator. And the best means basically the, the one that achieves the best and the highest level of protection to the environment as a whole. So in Cheston, we have what we believe are the best available techniques for secondary containment areas to allow operators to um, maintain secondary containments and to prove to environmental inspection agencies that those areas are capable of handling any spills um, to avoid them getting into the soil, into the groundwater or to the surface water underneath that area. So we can help industry to ensure regulatory compliance, to meet their requirements of their permits, to help them protect the assets from chemical damage where there are spills, to provide chemical resistant liners and coatings, to help safely contain any chemical spills, to protect the concrete itself. So that will help increase the lifetime of the area and the equipment. It reduces environmental concerns for the plant owners and operators. Um, because remember, you know, a, a fine that can exist can be extremely expensive. Um, we can help reduce life cycle costs and create a safer workplace for the people in that area. So very briefly, I just want to show a couple of case histories um, of some secondary containment areas that have been protected with arc industrial coatings. The first one comes from a steel mill in the United States. This was a new constructed area um, handling 20% hydrochloric acid, which of course is an acid that will penetrate very rapidly through concrete. Um, the client had experience with arc 
um, industrial composites, the 791 and the 988 quartz reinforced composites um, in other areas. They looked at many different types of coatings and laminated systems, and they decided to choose based on the uh, performance of the ARC 791 and 988, they went with the ARC solution. The total area of 1300 square meters was protected back in 2003, and that's still in service today. So here you just see some photographs of the application. So we have the new concrete, it was prepared and cured before the application began. You can see the application underway with the ARC 791 trowel applied material that's resistant to uh, changes in the coefficient thermal of, of thermal expansion and contraction of concrete applied over the ARC 797 primer. 988 was used in the trenches and sumps, which were more um, exposed to continuous immersion of these chemicals. And overall, you can see the completed application of this area. And the second one that I want to briefly show you is a more recent application from a couple of years ago in a power plant in Denmark um, in a, a water a generation plant which was exposed to sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. A lot of spills in this area and the existing epoxy coating had failed, causing some concerns from the Environmental Inspection Agency and they required the plant to upgrade this area and to protect it with a chemically resistant coating. So for this application the ARC NVE veil coat system was chosen and this was applied as you can see on the right hand photograph um, by roller to an area of about 130 square meters, providing a continuous um, coating system that is completely resistant to the chemicals in the area. Plus in the traffic areas where there's foot traffic, we broadcast in a slip resistant aggregate to provide a a safe element to the flooring as well as an environmentally um, contained area. So the environmental inspection body were very satisfied and gave accommodation to the plant for the work done in that area. So that's about all. I've run over my time a little bit. So I'm going to hand over to Ingo. Ingo. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick. No was problem. a very interesting application and uh, you know just uh, from my own introduction I'm Ingo Stenner when I started with Chesterton I had a little bit more hair at least on my head in the meantime I gained a lot of experience you know in the technical service area in particular of uh, industrial lubricants and also MRO uh, uh, products maintenance repair products and today I would like to talk about do I have the control now Let's have a look. Today I would like to talk about leakages of threaded pipe connections. And this is everybody probably knows these threaded pipe connections. They get connected, might sometimes you need to get readjusted, and then once it's in application, something stops dripping. That means you know it could be water from a, from a heating system. Water is not as critical for the environment, but it could be an acid, it could be some toxic material, anything which gets through a pipe has a tendency to be to leak. What is typically the way of sealing these type of pipes? We use typically uh, PTFE tape for actually sealing the threaded connections. The reason for that is PTFE is pretty much inert against, I would say, 99% of all chemicals, PTFE. Is doing an excellent job you know it's not getting attacked and it's doing a very good job of sealing threaded connections so now we know that but why are still pipes leaking and that is what i would like to bring you actually a little bit closer and for that we need to understand how does actually a ptfe tape work first of all the ptfe tape works like a gasket it actually seals the connect the contact areas the contact areas are here the small areas on the right hand side which are the two threads are actually getting in contact with each other. Furthermore, 
the same PTFE tape needs to be thick enough and has enough material to actually fill the gaps behind the threaded connection, which are here the black areas. The gaps there, you know, they're not filled. Still, material, toxic material, acidic material, maybe a gas, can still go through the threaded connections and actually leak it out into the environment. In some applications, the PTFE tape needs to be temperature resistant. And as pretty much everybody gets an idea, when you look at the product data sheet of the PTFE tape, you talk about 260 degrees Celsius. Every PTFE tape pretty much has the same temperature. But does that mean that all PTFE tapes are doing the same job at that temperature? And that's what I would like to show you as well. And last but not least, the handling of a PTFE tape. You know, is it easy to wrap around the threaded connections? How do you handle it? Is it flimsy? You know, at the end of the day, you need to apply it. And if it doesn't work the way you want to, that's not a very good thing either. So, again, you see a lot of PTFE tapes on the market. You know, they're all 100% PTFE. At least all of them, you know, were reviewed. It means, you know, the uh, percentage of PTFE is always the same. So what is the difference? The difference is how it's actually put together. How are the tapes? How are the tapes? How thick are the tapes? How much PTFE is actually put into the tape? And also how it's actually being spooled, you know, is it under, is it being stretched, uh, you know, during production? It means there are a few ways during production to make the production cost cheaper, lower cost, but at the same time, you know, when you as a customer get that and you want to apply it, it doesn't do the same job. And that's, you know, where there are five areas where you can test yourself as well, which is a nice and easy way. Does the PTFE tape you're using? Is that doing a good job or do you maybe need a better PTFE tape to actually gain or reach exactly that what you want? There are five areas. We're looking at the density of the PTFE tape. How thick is a PTFE tape? How much PTFE is actually in that tape? Then the porosity. Can chemicals go through the PTFE tape? Elongation, shredding, and thermal stability. So first of all, I would like to show you how you easily can check if your PTFE tape has a lot of PTFE in there, or maybe does not have a lot. Typically, good quality PTFE tapes have a density above one gram per cubic centimeters, and a low quality PTFE tapes have a density below one cubic uh, one gram per cubic centimeter. And this is easy to review because water has exactly density of one. So it means, is that now working, the video? Maybe not. Then, ah, there we go. Very good. And just to give you an idea, you have water and you just put a little bit of PTFE into the water. You try to press it down, and if it floats down to the bottom, you know a lot of PTFE is in there, high density, very good. If it floats on the surface, even if you try to push it down, and it still comes up, low density, it's not that good. You know, you probably will miss a good of very good features, which is a PTFE tape typically can have. And here you can see the first one floated straight to the bottom, and all the next ones you can see. You can push them down as much as like, they still always come back up. So let me have a look. Is this one? There we go. So it means that's the first point, you know, which you can consider. Very easy to test. Do, is that what I'm using right now, a good high quality PTFE tape or not? The next step is the porosity. You know, if a PTFE tape is already porous, means, you know, if it's porous, chemicals can go through. Solvents can go through, gases can go through. So that means everything can go through the PTFE tape even once it's applied. You can see that here in this application, for example, 
Very easy test again. What you just do, you use a, a benzene pen, and then you mark the PTFE tip. If the benzene, which is you know colorated and black in this case, goes through the PTFE tip, you highly likely have a low quality PTFE tip, which does not have enough PTFE for doing an industrial job and new application. Now you turn it around and you see, did it go through or did it not go through? And here you can see on the left-hand side, a very good PTFE tape. And all the other PTFE tapes show, and this is very, very bad, show significant leakages, high porosity. Second test, you know, which is very easy to do, to show or to see if the application or if the PTFE is actually doing a good job. The third test is elongation. Why do they, why do you need elongation? You need elongation to actually put a lot of stress around, you know, the, the PTFE tape while you actually apply it onto a pipe. Because you don't, what you don't want is that the PTFE tape starts to shred away or to rip while you're doing the application. And so what you want to see is a very nice and smooth application of the PTFE tape. If you do not have the right elongation and the stress, and you can see the handling already here, it's much harder. When you apply the same force, you see immediately it will rip away, it rip, rip apart, and therefore you can start all over again. To show you the elongation, what you want to see is at least 200% if you go in this direction, Typically, 250 is a very good job, but when you do that, you want to do that also in width because it needs to go through the mountains and valleys of the peak of the threaded connection. And then you go back again, and you still have the same strength of PTFE. If you do that with a low quality PTFE tape, and you see how flimsy it is already, it's not very good to handle. You do the same, it rips apart immediately. And that is the difference there. It means elongation is very important when you want to do a good seal, a positive seal. So now I will try to put it on, which I told you already, it's not very easy to put it on. But I will try. And I don't put that much pull on it because. I know that it will not work when I put a not, a not enough pull on it, but that also means that it doesn't go really very well into the mountains and the valleys. But still, I try. And you can roll it, you know, it was less, with lesser stress. You see, can see here it's flinging apart. And the next step is now we do what does what does it do when the PTFE tape is behaving under stress? You know, you want to do just to give you an idea. You're connecting these pipes. This causes a lot of stress. To simulate this, just use a sheet of paper. And I put some pressure onto the PTFE tape. And you see, it's absolutely 100% sound. If you do that the same with the other standard tape, uh, with the commodity tapes, See already shredded, it's shredding apart. And if these go into your pipe, into your system, it can even clog up valves, actuators, and other things. But on the other hand, of course, you know, when it's shredding away, it will leave leakage path. That means also chemicals can out go out into the environment. So these were four. On the last one, I would like to show you is how it actually behaves under temperature. And we all know 260 degrees Celsius is the temperature, you know, everybody stays on the product data sheet. But what does it do actually at this temperature? And you will see in this presentation, in this video, that some of these PTFE tapes has a tendency to shrink. If you have a pipe threaded connection and the PTFE tape has a tendency to shrink, it will open up gaps and when it opens up gaps, it will actually have more possibilities for uh, chemicals to actually pass through a threaded connection. I mean, here, 
we don't really, if you look here, this is 50 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, even if low temperatures, you know, we're starting you know, at 50, 75 degrees Celsius, commodity tapes, low quality tapes, which were during production stretched so that you know you can have a lot of tape, a thin, a flimsy tape. Now that stretch go back, goes back to the original shape when it's actually exposed to temperature. This is what you do not want to see. And you can see some of these tapes, even at temperatures around 50 degrees Celsius, already they're half size. And this is a very good indicator. It's a low quality tape. What you want to see is a tape like this here, and a tape like that, which is, in this case, Chesterton 800 Golden Tape and 800 DVGW Golden Tape. You know, these are staying in the place where you need it. Okay. So is it with the page open again? So just to summarize this, we have five points you can always test for yourself. Or we can also, we're also delighted to help you to see is the PTFE tape in your plant the right tape for your application or is it not? What you want to see is you want to see a high density, not a low density in the tape. You can actually feel that. You can roll a little ball and you can see the difference in the different tapes. You can see it with the porosity. You don't want, not want to have porosity. You uh, porous, porous tapes have the tendency to leak. You want to see that it got stretch, elongation over 250%. Friction resistance has to be very good. You don't want to have shredded parts, you know, which can go into the pipe. And terminal resistance should be very good as well. And last but not least, um, you know, of course, health and safety is one of the critical cases as well. And this gives you a just a light, last impression, you know, on the summarize, uh, you know, how actually golden tape can work in these applications. Again, you have different prices of different tapes, but the price itself is not the critical factor. What is critical is, does it actually do a good job or does it not do a good job? Because if you have leakages and if somebody gets, you know, Rips on the head, for example, of some acids or some toxic material, and he has to go to the hospital. A few pennies of a PTFE tips is really not important. And here's a this video really summarizes very, very nicely the five tests you can actually do. You see, even a below 100 temperature, 100 degrees Celsius, it's not doing a good job. And again, it's not only environmental consideration, also, you know, the health and safety risk factor is very, very important as well. So, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I would like to Give over to my colleague. I think it's Piotr's turn. Yes, Ingo, thank you. Uh, okay, can we switch to presentation, please? Uh, thanks. So uh, just to just to introduce myself, I'm a product line manager for polymers in Chesterton, and um, I'm gonna to focus now on uh, how we can help in uh, protecting environment against oil leakages uh, using Chesterton bearing protection technology in ceilings. So um, can I have a mouse control please or next slide? Okay, it should work. It doesn't. Uh, okay, now it works. So um, as you can see on slide, sometimes the consequence of leakages could be really serious and we've seen here for example a uh, a huge tanker leaking close to Mauritius to this year, and it was dramatic. 
But the point is that uh, industrial equipment like gearboxes and bearings are leaking, are dropping oil every day, and the industrial plants are losing barrels of oil. So the result of that can be a lot of pollution because not always it is um, handled, not always it can be uh, removed from the surrounding and it can penetrate and goes into the environment around us. So in consequence, it is very dangerous because it can cause pollution in land, ocean, sea and river waters. Uh, so we have to be very careful with that. Uh, also, in consequence, we are killing fauna and flora, animals and uh, plants. So we, uh, we have to uh, protect all of these resources and we have to protect our environment. Also, it is dangerous for people. So just as an example, let's have a look to the next slide. Uh, this is a steel mill example. The average size hot rolling steel mill can be losing like over 30,000 liters of uh, lubrication oil per month. What does it mean 30,000 liters? I think we cannot even imagine. I do not have but so large. So they are not losing even barrels, they are losing much more. And it's like one large tanker, the big truck with the oil. And it can be with the hydraulic over oil even more. I know that sometimes due to heavy leakages, high pressure, they are losing like 70, 80,000 liters per month. So this is very extreme case. However, it is happening in heavy duty industries quite often. So let's go to the next slide. It doesn't work. Vitaly, can you help me and switch slide? Thank you. So uh, because of that, Chesterton, uh, developed in many years a complete uh, wide range of solutions for bearing protection, uh, which we could see in a previous slide, if we come back to that. Uh, so in this case, we have a... Um... No, it doesn't work. Yes, this one. So uh, we, have a, we have a series uh, starting from, let's say, series which are replacing the most commodity seeming system which is called zimmering or rubber lip seal like this one in the camera so these are the standard, standard traditional oil lipses made of rubber or viton uh, the point is that these seas are having quite high friction and we replace them with the with the, our development the 30k since many years and this one is providing a much longer lifetime because of uh, one key feature which is completely different friction the 30K is very, very low friction seals because it's based on a PTFE composites uh, to provide the best performance and lifetime. So we develop based on that the split bearing protection, which is 33K, the next one, and then the labyrinth, uh, polymer labyrinth seals, which can withstand many, many thousands of hours and are non-touching or touchless uh, sealing solution which is not causing any wear on the shaft as well. In addition, we have a complete portfolio for a large shafts, for large environment, uh, large equipment, excuse me. Uh, it means like uh, 500, 600, over 1000 millimeters, and even the big ones, which can be over three meters. This is huge diameter, large diameter seas uh, called 50K, 51, 52, and 53K. And in the end, but not last, I would say, because we are still working on many developments and we have a lot of customized sealing systems. Uh, it's our latest development. It's called Split Matrix Seal. It is perfect to stop oil leakages. Why? This seal is designed to withstand quite high speed, to work on the warm surface. When you have a worn or fretted shaft from the, from the traditional zimmering, it's destroyed. And no other seal can work on that. But let's say you can't repair your machine. You have to stop the leakage somehow. So you put the matrix seal. And the matrix seal is a split seal. And also it will start vibration or run out. So high dynamic as well. So we can use this seal in many applications when we have no chance to stop leakage with a traditional solution. That's why we developed that. And I will show you an example for that. So Matrix is perfect for this and can be made as a quite large seal because the biggest shaft diameter we can reach over 760 millimeters. Let's go to the next slide. OK. 
Okay. Yes, here is a case with the 30K, with the first seal I showed you. So this case is from the fossil power plant from the soot blower. And it is showing the application where we have to protect the burning. We are talking about 70 pieces of this, of this equipment. And there was a leaking oil. It's close to the boiler. It's in a, in a hot area. It can cause danger. It can cause slippery floor and so on. And it's also pollution. And we are not talking about one. We are talking about 70 of them. So the customer was, was um, facing a problem with the traditional rubber seal, which was lasting only 15 days, up to 15 days. So when they replace with 30K, here you see the installation, another color, which is more gray, a different compound, different material, uh, more for these conditions there, they achieve much higher lifetime. And here we see a return on investment calculation and the summary for that. So just to, just to stress one point, they reach over 24 times more lifetime than the previous ceiling, ceiling solution. And in addition, the, the solution pay back itself in uh, just 30 days. But have a look on the, the rest. They, uh, they achieve an unbelievable uh, profit on that and the, and the payback and the, and the return because they didn't have to work with this all the time, again and again, every two weeks. And in addition, they stopped the leakages of the oil as well. Let's have a look at the next case with the split seal. Uh, I'm going to show you. So this one is with the 33K split bearing seal for the fan in heating plant. Oh my God, it doesn't work. So uh, you can see you can see that the equipment, it's a, it's a large fan for the fumes which are hot and it's uh, it's in outdoor condition and it got some failure with the with the rubber seal leaking uh, and leakage from the bearing. So uh, it was impossible to just replace it because it has to be disassembled completely. So they will have to put the crane there and and uh, and disassemble everything. So in addition, we found that there was a quite big damage from a traditional rubber seal, which warned the shaft and destroyed itself as well. So uh, what these gentlemen do there from the service company, they uh, use the sandpaper just to make the surface of the shaft a little bit better. We were very afraid to put 33K there. Here I have the 33K. You can see it's using the sign PTFE composites as a 30K. So the problem is that this seal is quite sensitive. It needs good surface and good, um, good bearing. Uh, conditions, so it is notwithstanding a lot of runoff, for example. So in this case, we were we are really afraid if it will work, but we found it very good. The seal was working over uh, 24 months, over two years, uh, no problem, and still in operation. So it is low friction as well as 30k quick installation, and um, and higher reliability. So. Also, we combine it with the quick deliveries. It's uh, available even in 24-hour program. So let's down on all the best advantages of this seal. At the end, I call this seal as a, as a best friend of maintenance teams because they can also avoid a lot of disassembly. And in addition, we are seeing quickly the equipment without disassembly means we can stop leakages, we can eliminate uh, immediately without uh, wasting the time and losing more and more oil. So at the next slide, we see next application, uh, which is a, a matrix, matrix seal. Uh, Vitaly, does it work when I'm clicking or you are clicking? Because I don't know. I click once and it's two times. OK, this is the site we need. So uh, this slide is showing, you remember the tankers with the steel mill. This is exactly the case. On the left side, you see the you see the gearbox, not the big one. We see foot of the of the worker, and then the matrix seals. But they installed many of them. The, this was complete program to uh, to eliminate leakages. And this steel mill in US uh, reached a massive reduction on the on the on the oil consumption and loss of oil. And we can see that on the next slide. Yes, here when. They show that they reduce from nine tankers to only three tankers, so it's like three times less. Uh, they cut down leakages a lot uh, just just by using matrix seal. In addition, 
this oil is not a cheap oil, so it uh, it is a it is a cost of oil uh, saved, and the saving is rated over one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. So this is how EPS, how polymers in a Chesterton portfolio works, and how we can help you to stop the leakages immediately, to stop them uh, efficiently, that you can reduce the oil and also you can uh, extend the lifetime of your equipment and the reliability. So anytime you have any questions for a, for a oil or bearing protection rotary seas, uh, from Chesterton, let us know, send us an inquiry, we will be more than happy to support you and to give you the perfect solution for that uh, usage. Let's go to the next presenter and our expert who is uh, Mr. Enrico Zini, and I pass the ball. <laughs> sure, thank you, Piotr, very interesting, and uh, effectively the intention regarding the mechanical seals is to offer exactly the same benefits. Uh, than the other lines, in this case, elimination of the leakages and the emissions to the atmosphere of all the products that can be dangerous, harmful, uh, flammable that you can process. So I guess I have now the control. And uh, introducing the solution, how can we do that? Uh, we can do that thanks to the Chesson 4400 gas lubricated seal for real zero emissions. Uh, you can already take note of that name, you can google that, look for that on YouTube, uh, Chesson 4400. Uh, the takeaways of that final chapter of today's presentation is that the gas lubricated seal works with a pressurized clean nitrogen gas cushion that is generated between the seal faces and that the pressure of discussion is always 20 psi, let's say 1.4 bar, higher than the process pressure. So that the only thing that leaks from that seal is clean nitrogen. Part of that goes to the atmosphere, part of that goes to the process, and that's the only thing that will leak from that seal. No uh, harmful gas, harmful powder, or harmful liquid you might process will never go through that pressurized nitrogen cushion. So let's go a little bit in detail on these two technical aspects of this solution, uh, just to give you the idea of how it is possible. And the first picture is the one of a cutaway 3D model of a centrifugal pump. So you can see here, I guess you can see more or less my arrow. That's the impeller, that's the shaft. So here we have the rotary part of the mechanical seal with the rotary face. You can see there are some grooves in that face. By the way, the grooves have a certain geometry. It means that you need to be sure about the rotating direction. Uh, you can buy the same seal on a clockwise or counterclockwise uh, version. And so these grooves on the rotary face are the ones that thanks to the motion, create this pressurized cushion of nitrogen. Now, it will be a little bit tricky because uh, we are doing this presentation through GoToWeb, and um, I will click on that link now. I will probably need Vitaly to please support me to have the, the video. Oh, wow, that works perfectly. Uh, so that's a public video. Uh, around the Chesson 4400 seal. And jumping from the first seconds of introduction, okay, we can go directly to the point. So here you see a dynamic view of how it works. You see that we have, we're talking about a rotating equipment, so the rotary face is turning. What you see here is a cutaway of the next topic, of these minutes in plant control system. Now you see the pressurized nitrogen injected between the seal phases. Um, and that pressurized nitrogen will then create a lift off of the two phases with that positive pressurized clean gas, inert gas, 
between the CL phases. And that's why this CL has no leakage shadow of the process fluid to the atmosphere. It's a real zero leakage. It's also a non-contacting CL. It will not generate heat. It will not wear out as long as your nitrogen injection is reliable. You see here a 3D view of that hydrodynamic nitrogen pressurized cushion. So coming back to the presentation, if this works properly. Guess here. Well. Wow. As a summary, you can see on the left hand side that the stationary phase of this mechanical seal has a series of holes you can see here in the mean diameter that work to inject the gas just in between the sealed phases. By the way, that seal looks like a single seal, but actually works like a double seal because you have a buyer gas, clean gas, in a working in an inboard and outboard seal interface. And that really works like a double seal. There is no contamination of the process to the atmosphere and not even process to the barrier gas as long as the gas is reliable. So to summarize the uh, benefits in written slide, the grooves on the sintered silicon carbide rotary phase create this cushion of pressurized power gas between the seal phases. And 4400 is a non contacting seal. So it makes it suitable for thermal sensitive fluids like polymers, cocking, flashing, and whatsoever. The second and last key technical point I would like to share with you is that this pressurized cushion of nitrogen is maintained at a higher pressure than the process. This means that there is an automatic regulation thanks to that membrane in the gland by this factory standard to maintain a positive delta P of this clean nitrogen versus process. No need of external control panel, no need of special trainings to do that. It's absolutely automatic. You can see here a real 4400 cutaway sample where you have here the uh, filter and the process fluid goes through the filter and actuates the membrane in order to make more or less gas supply reach the phases of the seal. So, uh, of course, I would need, let's say, half an hour to describe better how these work. Um, I would just like to conclude with this uh, final video where we can see in a laboratory test what this means. It means that let's consider. Okay. Let's consider a generic pump and supposing that we have a, uh, a certain process pressure, the barrier gas pressure is always higher, 20 psi higher, 1.4 bar higher. So let's suppose that there is a peak of pressure in your process, then automatically that membrane sets the nitrogen, the clean nitrogen barrier gas pressure higher so that there is always that cushion that prevents the process fluid to leak to the atmosphere. And that works also on the other direction. You will see uh, in the next seconds that the uh, technician will then drop the process pressure and automatically that biogas pressure, so now you see that is dropping quickly and you see that automatically that biogas pressure follows the trend of the process always to keep that 20 PSI positive pressure differential, okay? So again, if you uh, are interested, uh, now you see an example of pressure peak and always the 20 PSI are maintained. So long thing short, that's the reason why the 4400 gas seal from Chesterton 
is um, capable to handle harmful fluids and therefore offering you no contamination at all of the atmosphere or the process. If you're interested by this uh, topic, please drop us an email or look for Chesterton 4400 in Google. Hope this has been interesting for you. Vitaly, I let you conclude the webinar. I think we don't hear you. Literally, we cannot Italy. hear you. Okay. No. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for attending to this webinar. If you have any other question, uh, drop us an email on uh, all the five chapters that we have presented you. It is uh, one minute past the official time, so keep safe, have a Merry Christmas, and uh, see you next year for further webinars together. Take care and stay safe. All the best. Bye-bye.